When it comes to the virtual event page host experience, the first thing we need to do is add the touchpoint to our event. Navigate to the event overview screen and click the big plus button to add a new touchpoint. Select the virtual event page to add it in. Let's click into the virtual event page touchpoint. Welcome to your new virtual home. Let's acquaint ourselves first and get comfortable with the lay of the land. You'll notice Splash has seamlessly brought in your brand's colors and fonts just the same as they have on the other various touchpoints. That said, you still may wish to make some enhancements. Along the right-hand side, you'll find a similar experience to that of the event page touchpoint. All the different components for the active virtual state can be edited here. Before we get down and dirty in there, let's make sure you're aware of all the different virtual event states. In the top left, you'll notice a drop-down menu titled States. Attendees will see a different virtual state of the event depending on when they click their check-in link, based on the event's start time. A guest who clicks their check-in link early will be notified that the event hasn't started yet. The check-in countdown state will display up until 30 minutes before the event start time. This state is locked at 30 minutes prior to the event to allow enough time for check-in and cannot be adjusted. Within 30 minutes before the event begins, guests can check themselves in with one click in the check-in open state. Default text is included on screen to let the guests know when the event begins or that the event has started. All guest check-in data will sync back to your event's guest list and subsequent CRMs based on any integrations set up within your organization. Attendees who attempt to access a link that has already been used by someone else to check into the virtual event will be prompted to register for the event themselves. This is referred to as the check-in linked use virtual state. Your event page's registration status, capacity, or privacy settings will dictate whether or not the visitor can register to access the live stream. Attendees who successfully check into the event will be able to see your live stream content. Since the live stream state is the most important state of your virtual event, let me show you how to make some adjustments to it. First, I'll click into the page component and upload an image for my background. Once uploaded, I can click this navigation button to head back to the main list. Next, I'll update the styling of my event title and tweak the sizing of the main logo. Perfect. Since the live stream state represents where my virtual event will be viewed, I'll also need to implement my live stream embed into the virtual content area. As I click into this navigation button, I see two choices, embed or link out. Let's first focus on the embed choice. Click the embed component and then click embed options. This workspace is designed to give the user three quick options, Zoom, Vimeo, or custom embed. Once that selection is made, your live stream will display on page. Allow us to break down all three options for you in the following segments. There is another option you might want to consider, which is the second embed. The Add Embed button allows the host to add additional embedded content. Most commonly, we've seen a live stream in the main embed and then some sort of audience interaction tool like Slido in the second embed. To do this, click Add Embed. Now, click into the second embed component to edit. Click Embed Options, and then select which type of embed you want and paste in the necessary content. A user can also toggle between the different multi-embed layouts by clicking into the layout navigation item. Their choices are sidebar, which extends the second embed from the top of the page to the bottom, side-by-side, -side, which will place the content horizontally next to each other, or stack, which will move the second embed underneath the main one. If a user wishes to get rid of the second embed altogether, they can click the trash can button to delete it.